What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. I've been meaning to start up my YouTube channel for a couple of years now, uh, but honestly I've just been procrastinating. <laughs> there was always something that held me back from getting started. In my mind I was always thinking, well it's not the perfect time. I'm busy with school, busy trying to build my business. In reality, all of those are just excuses. This YouTube channel is going to be about health, about fitness, about nutrition, lifestyle, basically anything I really want to talk about. That's the beauty of having your own YouTube channel. I also want to incorporate a little bit of a Q&A to this channel. So if you have any questions and I think that answering them will help other people as well, go ahead and ask them down in the comments below in any of my videos and if it's a good enough question, I'll answer it. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my five exercises that I believe almost everybody should do. If you master these five exercises, then everything else is extra. These are fundamental movement patterns that should make up the bulk of any exercise program. But before I get into the exercises, there does have to be a certain amount of stability, mobility, and core strength before starting any kind of strength training program. The first exercise I chose is the most fundamental movement that you can do. It's something that you did when you were a baby, growing up into a child, and if you do this one exercise for the rest of your life, you will be 70, 80 years old, the best shape of your life, being able to get from the floor up to stand. The exercise is the get up. It's the most fundamental movement pattern and it involves several different movements incorporated into one. In essence, all you're doing is you're going from the floor, coming up to stand, and then back down to the floor with control. Now the most common get up is the Turkish get up, which is done with a kettlebell overhead. It will help you to identify asymmetries between the left and the right side of your body. It will show you what your weaknesses are, and that's very important because your weaknesses will always be the source of your injury. This movement will improve your mobility in all ranges and planes of motion, as well as your stability, being able to stabilize and move your entire body as a unit. This exercise also has the benefit of utilizing time under tension, which will really build your strength, especially after you master the movement and you begin to increase your weight. It will improve the linkage of your body your body's ability to move together in a synchronized way. All the other exercises that I have here are gonna be amazing for you, but if you only do one for the rest of your life, I would pick the get up. It will serve you for the rest of your life. I mean, think about it. If you perform this exercise even just twice a week for the rest of your life, you will always have the skill of being able to get from the floor up to stand and back down to the floor. And as you get older, that skill is invaluable. So the get up for me is one of the most foundational and important movements that everybody should start to incorporate. The next exercise is the deadlift. And I'm also gonna be pairing this up with the kettlebell swing because essentially they're the same movement pattern. They're both a hip hinge. And the hip hinge is a foundational human movement that everybody should learn because it will allow you to pick up anything from the ground safely while maintaining control of your spine. The deadlift as well as the kettlebell swing is an exercise where your whole body is involved. Just like the get up, this exercise will teach your body to move in an integrated way and it has immense carryover to all other aspects of your life. Regardless of whether you're an athlete, whether you work at an office, full-time mom, whether you're older and you have injuries, mastering the deadlift will have so much benefit to all areas of your life. But here's the thing with the deadlift. It's a high risk, high reward exercise, which means that you really have to take the time to master the skill of the hip hinge. Do not ego lift with the deadlift. Focus on stability, being able to stabilize your body. Focus on the foundation of the deadlift, the form, and start out very light. I'll be making videos on each of these exercises, breaking them down 
and really analyzing the technique and giving you guys uh, tools that you can start to incorporate them. But just know if you're going to start incorporating the deadlift or the kettlebell swing to really master the foundation. Quick note about the kettlebell swing is it is a hip hinge. It's a little bit different than the deadlift. This is a more ballistic movement. Right? You're using the kettlebell and you're swinging it using your hips. Now, the kettlebell swing is the foundation to all other kettlebell exercises. And because of the nature of the fact that it's, the weight is always moving, you're really gonna build rhythm and timing. These are assets that are gonna make you more athletic. You're gonna be able to know when to tighten up and when to be loose. Just like Bruce Lee. If you ever studied Bruce Lee and his techniques, he would be loose, he would be limber, and then right before that strike, he would tighten up. That's a skill, that's a rhythm, that's timing. The kettlebell swing will teach you that while also utilizing a very powerful hip hinge. The next exercise is the squat. Now, some people say the deadlift is the king. Some people say the squat is the king. I say they both are. They're both extremely important exercises to start to incorporate into your routine regardless of your goals, regardless of who you are. The difference between the deadlift and the squat other than the hip hinge, is the center of gravity. With the deadlift, you're picking up objects from the floor. With the squat, you're carrying objects higher up the body. This will change the recruitment patterns and will just hit the body in different ways. The squats is great for building your lower body and being able to stabilize your upper body. There's so many different variations of all these exercises and eventually I will be going through those in separate videos but for right now, just know that the squat is one of the most important exercises that you can start to incorporate that will build your entire body. And you could always spice things up, right? You might say, oh, doing these same five exercises will get boring. There's so many different variations. I mean, you got barbell back squats, you got goblet squats, you got split squats. So many different variations to help keep things fresh. The next exercise is a pull. Now, it took me some time to come up with whether I wanted to choose the row or the pull up and after doing some research after knowing how the human body operates, I decided to choose the row. The row is a more complete back exercise than a pull up. Now this because I'm saying that doesn't mean that you should just do rows and not pull ups. Incorporate both rows and pull ups, but for the purposes of this video, I can only choose one, so I chose the row. A horizontal pull like the row is better for your posture because it's gonna involve not just your lats, which are the prime mover, it's also gonna work on the muscles responsible for holding your shoulder blades together, improving your posture, your rhomboids and your traps, mid and lower traps a little bit more, which are more responsible for having that upright shoulders back posture as you move throughout the day. There's also so many different variations of the rows, including one of my favorites, the bird dog row, which I'll get into in a separate video. But for the pull, I chose the row. And the fifth exercise, I chose a push. Very fundamental movement pattern. And I think the majority of people in the fitness industry would choose a bench press, right? If you think about powerlifting, what are the big three lifts? Squat, deadlift, bench press. And in my opinion, the bench press is an overrated upper body exercise. I know for some of you, you might hear that and you may be like, that's blasphemy. Bench press is every Monday. I hit bench, feel my chest get swole, right? Nah, bro. Having an impressive bench press is great if you're a power lifter, but from a functional standpoint, bench press is very limited. First of all, you're lying on your back. You have back support, which will allow you to move more weight. However, the process of pinning your shoulders together and back and holding them there throughout your bench press is actually taking away something that's called scapular rhythm. So as your arms move through space, your scapula have a process in which they move as well. The bench press limits that, which will put a lot of strain on the joints of the body long term. That's why so many of us have problems with our shoulders if we're always focused on bench. There's also less contraction of your entire shoulder girdle, which puts a counter strain on the joints, right? This is why I chose the overhead press because it incorporates your core, your shoulders, 
as well as your entire body to lift the weight. As well as lifting weight up overhead is extremely beneficial. It requires some serious shoulder mobility, requires the opening of your lats, the ability for your lats to go overhead, as well as not allowing your low back to round. Now this exercise might not be for beginners or anybody with shoulder limitations, just like all five of these exercises, right? They might not be for you where you are right now. That's fine. Work on your mobility, work on your stability, your core strength, and then build up to be able to perform these five fundamental exercises that I believe just about everybody should be doing. That's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. These five exercises are really should be the bulk of your training program. Now, of course, training your core and doing a lot of more unilateral work is important. And these five exercises are just the base, right? There's so many different variations of all five of these movement patterns that you can do. And I'll be sharing them with you in future videos. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. I'm always down to have a educated debate and go ahead and leave any questions down below. As I said before, if I think it's a good question, maybe I'll make a video answering it. I'm Zach. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Yeah.